Good evening and welcome to the Clemson United Methodist Church Maundy's Thursday service. We're glad that you're here with us tonight as we continue the Lenten journey, but we move now into these days, these last days of Jesus's life. Tonight, our service will include a, a love feast, which is an alternative to Holy Communion until we can gather again as the gathered community and share in the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the wine, the sharing of Jesus' body and blood. So tonight we will share in a, a love feast, and then we will move into a foot washing uh, that is appropriate for our virtual uh, worship together. And then we will begin to journey into tomorrow, Good Friday, and what that means for us. A couple of announcements before we go to worship together. First, I just want to remind you that um, our youth have prepared a, an Easter sunrise service for you on Sunday morning, Easter morning at 7 o'clock a.m. So be sure to get up and watch them. That will be on Facebook as well as YouTube. And so if you don't get up quite that early, there'll be an opportunity to watch it later. But I, I hope that you will take time to see the growth in our youth, the discipleship, and, and their acts of service on Easter morning. Then at 1030, both our traditional service and the vine will have the Easter celebrations uh, traditional service will be on Facebook and YouTube, and our Vine service will be live streamed and then later posted to YouTube. So we hope that you will be a part of it. If this is your first time worshiping us with um, Clemson United Methodist Church, we're glad you're here. We hope that you will travel these days to the cross with us and then into the resurrection days.
We join a solemn journey of three days that has changed the world and our own lives. Followers of Jesus have been taking this journey since his first followers took it long ago. This is the night of love. On the night Jesus took a towel and basin and washed his disciples' feet, on this night he told them to do the same for others, to show their love for him and for one another. This is the night of love. On this night, followers of Jesus have invited those preparing for baptism to begin with them a solemn vigil of prayer and fasting until the day of Christ's resurrection is fulfilled. This is the night of love. On this night, Jesus broke the bread and shared wine with his followers for the last time and invited them to remember him to encounter him anew whenever they did the same. This is the night of love. On this night, followers of Jesus have welcomed those who have returned to the way of Jesus after a time of wandering and a journey of returning. This is the night of love. This is a night of love. And so on this night, we welcome the penitent. All here have wandered and invite all preparing, all here are still learning, to join us in hearing, obeying the commandment of our master and to feast at his table that we may love one another as he has loved us. Come ye sinners, come ye thirsty, come ye weary, come to the night of love.
Let us pray. Be present at our table, Lord. Be here and everywhere adored. Thy creatures bless and grant that we may feast in paradise with thee. Amen. Father of earth and heaven, thy hungry children feed. Thy grace be to our spirits given, that true immortal Our scripture reading comes from John chapter 6, verses 25 through 35. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus replied, I assure you that you are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate all the food you wanted. Don't work for the food that doesn't last, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the human one will give you. God the Father has confirmed him as his agent to give life. They asked, What must we do in order to accomplish what God requires? Jesus replied, This is what God requires, that you believe in him whom God sent. They asked, What miraculous sign will you, will you do that we can see and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, just as it was written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus told them, I assure you, it wasn't Moses who gave the bread from heaven to you, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. The bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said, Sir, give us this bread all the time. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. One of the things that we're desperately missing right now as we're having to shelter in place with the COVID-19 is an opportunity to get together and just eat. It's something I think that I've taken for granted over these last couple of weeks or before. And it's a time where when we get together with our friends, with our family, that we're able to sort of lean into the conversations that are taking place. You know, what's happened in your life today? What's going on? What did you do? Um, What's the family news? What's going on in our sports? A lot of these things have been taken away from us, and especially as we want so desperately to be able to sit down and break bread together. You know, a lot of our times that we get together and break bread and, and have what we call these agape meals, if you will. We, we don't formally call them those, but when we get together, we're having agape meals or love feast. They're often because of some great celebration that we want to, to observe birthdays and anniversaries and wedding receptions. Um, we're, we're missing that. We're missing that. And so tonight, we want an opportunity to share in a time of love feast. You know, Jesus used to get together with the disciples regularly. They would sit down, and almost every time we read about Jesus and the disciples, it's over some kind of meal. Whether it's on the beach, whether it's in a boat, whether it's in the upper room, they're always getting together. And the love feast was designed to remember the times that Jesus would get together for with the disciples in a time where we can get together with agape love, with a fellowship love, with a time of sharing. Sometimes those times are very intimate moments where we share the good things, the bad things, our secrets, those most um, intimate things with one another. And so we're missing a lot of that right now. Tonight, we come to this table to share in the bread of life. The scripture that Amanda just read talks about Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is something that even as we eat our bread tonight or your donuts or your biscuits or whatever you brought to the table and we drink our drink, that we'll be filled up with it physically. 
But maybe in a couple of hours or tomorrow morning, we will be hungry again physically and want more, more food. And so the bread of life comes to us through Jesus as something that sustains us and keeps us going and moves us into a, a, a fuller life with Christ, an eternal life with Christ. When we are not able to gather as a community of faith in person and have congregations together to, to share in Holy Communion because we are virtually worshiping and communion is set apart for a time when we come together and we share in the body and blood of Christ, we are able tonight to offer as an alternative a love feast, a time where you who are tuning in and are watching are able for all of us to break bread, to be filled with whatever it is we have on our tables, to drink from a cup, a cup that also, as believers in Christ, we share in Christ's love. These are not the body and blood of Christ or the elements of communion, but rather they are symbols for us of the community of faith that is gathered together tonight on this night of love. And so now I invite you to take your donuts, your bread, your biscuits, whatever you have before you, to take a bite, to eat it, to share with one another in your homes. And to drink from the cup of love. to sit with this meal, to understand that Christ loves us. Even as we are apart, we are together as the body of Christ. During this journey of Lent, we have been called to a time of fasting, a time of prayer, a time of almsgiving. And so I invite you as well to think about how we can give. And as our offering tonight, uh, and you'll see on, on the screen the different ways that you can give as our offering, as a means of sharing in the ministry, giving into the ministry that we do here at Clemson United Methodist Church. I invite you to be generous as we continue this Lenten journey on this Maundy, Maundy um, Thursday a meal of love, a meal of grace, and in a few moments learning what it means to be divine servants with Christ and then to lead us into the next, the next day, the Good Friday. Will you pray with me? Gracious and holy God, as we partake of this bread and we drink from these cups, we feel nothing but your pure love within us and around our tables, and even for those of us who may be sitting alone, may the Holy Spirit indwell in those hearts and know that you are not alone. We are here with you. God is here with you. We ask your blessing on the gifts that will be given, that we will use them in mission and ministry to reach out into the world with the same love that we are sharing around our tables tonight. Bless us, O oh Lord and all of the gifts that you have given to us. And then, God, may we be a blessing. Amen. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow you.
now time for us to confess our sins, my brothers and sisters. Christ shows us his love by becoming a humble servant. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we, we, your church, confess that often our spirit has not been that of Christ, where we have failed to love one another as he loves us, where we have pledged loyalty to him with our lips and then betrayed, deserted, or denied him. Forgive us, we pray, and by your spirit make us faithful in every time of trial. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. But Christ suffered and died for us, and raised from the dead and ascended on high for us, and continues to intercede for us. Believe the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Now read our gospel lesson that comes from the Gospel of John in the 13th chapter. Uh, hear these words. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his time had come to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them fully. Jesus and his disciples were sharing the evening meal. The devil had already provoked Judas, Simon Iscariot's son, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew the Father had given everything into his hands, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the table and took off his robes. Picking up a linen towel, he tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he was wearing. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will understand later. No, said Peter, you will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't have a place with me. Simon Peter said, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus responded, those who have bathed need only to have their feet washed because they are completely clean. You disciples are clean, but not every one of you. He knew who would betray him. That's why he said, not every one of you is clean. After he washed the disciples' feet, he put on his robes and returned to his place at the table. He said to them, do you know what I've done for you? You call me teacher and Lord. And you speak correctly because I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you too must wash each other's feet. I have given you an example. Just as I have done, you also must do. I assure you, servants aren't greater than their master, nor are those who are sent greater than the one who sent them. Since you know these things, you'll be happy if you do them. Foot washing has always had a special place in my heart uh, as campus minister with Clemson Wesley, our college ministry. At the end of every semester, we take our, our seniors and we put them in the seat of the disciples and I wash their feet, not as a way to culminate them or to praise them for a job well done, but as a way to remind them that they're being sent out into the world for a life of service and a life of love. This was an important thing for Jesus. On the night in which he knew he was gonna be betrayed, he took time to teach his disciples and to remind them that they are also called to wash one of their feet just as he washed their feet. He made it an important time to mandate their call to love and to serve. But friends, it's not just about the feet. It's not about the actual feet. Um, it's more about the serving and the loving. And so I encourage you tonight, um, either during this time, you're welcome to press pause, or perhaps after the service is over, to take the basin that um, we hope that you have, and if not, you've got time to go find one. And if you're home with other people, maybe spend some time washing one another's feet and look each other in the eye and remind them that you were called to love and to serve. Or maybe you're home by yourself and you're like, I don't know if I can get down to my feet. I encourage you to, to wash your hands. This is something we hear daily for the last few months and we'll probably hear for months to come, to wash your hands, to wash your hands. And so I encourage you as a Monday, Thursday practice and as a practice of a life of a disciple, every time you wash your hands for 20 seconds or more over the coming weeks and days, remind yourself, say a breath prayer, Lord, I'm here to serve. Lord, I am here to love and help me to do so. Friends, I invite you after you have had a chance to wash your hands, to wash your feet, to join me in a prayer as we sort of move from this Monday, Thursday experience to prepare ourselves for what will happen tomorrow as Good Friday approaches. Hear these words of prayer. You knew your hour had come. You knew your betrayer. You knew your enemies. 
You knew that the straw vote would not be in your favor, but you loved unto the end. Thank you for loving us, even unto death. Teach us to love like you. Teach us to love each other, to love even our enemies like you loved us. You took on the form of a servant, washing the feet of those whom you discipled. You defined humility and servanthood. You are he who was surely sent from God. Thank you for serving us. Teach us to be servants without fail, to make humility our constant companion, and to seek no glory for ourselves. Remind us when we forget. On that solemn evening, you surrounded yourself with friends and enemies, persons of faith and persons of ill will. Help us to be able to always emulate you when we are surrounded by our friends and especially when we are surrounded by our enemies. You have established a new commandment. Help us to live it out in every moment, in every aspect of our lives, in our families, in our churches, in our communities, and throughout the world. On this holy day, we gather to remember again the miracle that you performed in our lives. You have brought us into the marvelous light. At great cost to you, you have given us new life and life eternal. Amen. Thank you. 